floats like a butterfly and hits like a Ford Escort truck. From the sand mines of Cameroon to the highest of highs in combat sports, Francis Ngannou has punched his way to stardom, thanks to his unrivaled determination and a punching power that can reduce people to molecules in an instant. So before he takes the boxing world by storm following a spectacular performance against Tyson Fury, let's look back at the Cameroonian legend's incredible story. Born and raised in the humble village of Batie in Cameroon, Francis Ngannou's early life was defined by poverty and perseverance. Struggling to make ends meet, he undertook grueling work to make ends meet. One of the things that I read about you was that you worked in a sand mine when you were young. That you dug sand all day. Yeah, that was growing up. <clears throat> um, I was ten, about 10 years old when I started that because I was in the village and uh, where, where I grew up. After my leaving my aunt's house, I went to my grandma and we had to like do something, you know, we had to work. But despite the hardships, the predator harbored an unyielding passion for boxing, heavily influenced by the legendary Mike Tyson. Since opportunities in his homeland were scarce, Ngannou made a life-changing decision to seek a better future and embarked on a journey to France at 26 years old. The challenge continued as Ngannou found himself living on the unforgiving streets of Paris. It was here that fate intervened in the form of Fernand Lopez, the head coach of the MMA factory. While boxing was Ngannou's first love, Lopez recognized his talents and encouraged him to explore the world of mixed martial arts. And in 2013, Ngannou took his first step toward greatness. Although known primarily for his Thor-like knockout power, Ngannou interestingly won his first few fights by submission. In his professional debut, the Cameroonian smashed his opponent on the feet and then sunk in an armbar that ended the fight in under two minutes. In his second fight, Ngannou suffered his first professional defeat but he bounced back with a sensational knockout victory against Bilal Tahahi. On the same night, Ngannou fought once more against another local fighter. From the opening bell, it was clear that Ngannou's opponent didn't want to stand and trade with him. But whenever he went for takedowns, the predator outmuscled him and ended up in a dominant position. In under half a round, Ngannou outmuscled his opponent and choked him out with an arm triangle. A few months later, Ngannou fought in Switzerland, where he rocked his opponent with the first few strikes he threw. The Predator's foe immediately went for a takedown, but ended up fighting off a guillotine. Ngannou's grip was tighter than a hawk's, and he ended the fight in just 44 seconds. In his final fight outside of the UFC, Ngannou had a relatively tough outing, as he had a back-and-forth first round. Both Ngannou and his opponent had their moments in the clinch and on the mat. In the second round, Ngannou used his brute strength to devastating effect, taking his opponent down by finishing the job by ground-and-pound TKO. With five victories in six fights, the Cameroonian was catapulted into the world's top MMA promotion, the UFC. Ngannou's debut in 2015 marked the beginning of his rapid ascent, earning him the reputation as the most intimidating presence on the UFC roster. In his first UFC fight, Ngannou faced Luis Enrique. The Batie native began with punishing leg kicks, but Enrique snagged one and brought the action to the ground. Despite a takedown, Enrique couldn't land anything significant, and the referee called for a restart. Back on their feet, they grappled in a clinch, exchanging strikes as the round ended. In the second round, Ngannou aimed to unleash strikes, while Enrique closed the distance. Unable to capitalize, 
Enrique fell victim to Ngannou's devastating left uppercut, leading to a knockout and a smashing start to his career. Uh, I bien it Bien sûr que c'était mon premier combat et j'étais un peu, j'étais un peu frustré, mais bon, ça s'est bien passé. J'ai eu confiance à mon style, à ma boxe et voilà, ça s'est passé tout à fait comme on avait prévu aux entraînements. In his second professional fight, Ngannou faced a seriously tough test in Curtis Blades, a wrestling phenom who is expected to steamroll the big man. Unsurprisingly, Blades went for a takedown, but Ngannou thwarted the attempt, keeping the fight on the feet and pressing his foe against the cage. Ngannou landed a solid left, wobbling Blades midway through the first round, though Blades responded with a leg kick. Ngannou tripped Blades with a left, but Blades swiftly regained his feet in the clinch. In the final minute, Blades secured a solid takedown, but Ngannou stood back up within 30 seconds. The second round saw Blades throwing wild punches, opening the door for Ngannou's kicks. Two minutes in, Blades managed a takedown, but Ngannou returned to his feet with ease. Blades' right eye was nearly swollen shut from earlier punches, and Ngannou capitalized on the situation. As Blades sat in his corner before the third round, the ringside doctor examined his eye. The American was deemed unable to continue, and Ngannou was awarded the win by a doctor's stoppage. Following two laborious victories by Ngannou's standards, he started putting his vicious knockout power on display early. In the summer of 2016, Ngannou battled Boan Mihalovic. Both men were confident pre-fight. The fight lacked action in the first minute, with both men circling each other. In the second minute, however, Ngannou connected with a couple of bombs and then pounded his foe on the ground to win the fight. In late 2016, Ngannou put his submission skills on display against Anthony Hamilton. The first few seconds of the fight lacked action since Hamilton stayed away from the danger zone. However, the two entangled in a clinch near the one-minute mark when Ngannou held his foe in a Kimura grip. Within seconds, Ngannou took Hamilton down and then torqued Hamilton's arm to force the tap. Only a month later, Ngannou found himself swimming among the sharks. His first top-ranked opponent was the legendary Andrei Arlovsky, a former UFC heavyweight champion. Early in the first round, Ngannou swung and missed with some heavy punches, while Arlovsky focused on targeting his lead leg with kicks. However, as he gauged Arlovsky's timing, Ngannou sees the perfect opportunity when an overhand right from Arlovsky went astray. In response, Ngannou connected with a precise left hook that rocked Arlovsky's head, and swiftly followed it up with a powerful uppercut that sent Arlovsky crashing to the canvas. Arlovsky landed on all fours, defensively curled up, and the bout was swiftly halted as Ngannou continued to unleash a barrage of strikes. Following a thunderous victory, Ngannou knew who he wanted to fight next. Those and Alistair over him, but I just talk about them because I think that um, Ken Velasquez is um, injury. If he's uh, on the game, I'm ready for him. He's the, the, next, the next one who I would like to fight. Ngannou's wish was the UFC command, and a few months later, he locked horns with one of the scariest heavyweights on the planet, Alistair Overeem. The UFC 218 heavyweight fight was expected to be a barn buster, but Overeem refused to stand and trade with Ngannou. Overeem initiated the action by charging forward with a punch and attempting a takedown. Ngannou, however, adeptly defended, resulting in a clinch between the two fighters. Following a break in the action, Ngannou swiftly demonstrated his striking prowess delivering a powerful jab before unleashing a devastating uppercut that left Overeem's lights dimmed long before he even met the canvas. Overeem had no idea what hit him until Dana White revealed just how vicious Ngannou's knockout power was. This, this fight, he breaks the record. <laughs> he breaks the record for most consecutive defenses, and Francis Ngannou has the world record for the most powerful punch. 
His punch is the equivalent to 96 horsepower, which is equal to getting hit by a Ford Escort going as fast as it can. Uh Scary stuff indeed, Dana. But champion Stipe Miocic was prepared to deal with Ngannou's horsepower when the two locked horns at UFC 220. Ngannou was the favorite heading into the fight and was getting a lot of promotional favors from the UFC, and Stipe didn't like it much. I mean, he deserves it, you know, he's a big, strong, tough dude. It's hard, I mean, what is it, what, is it? what kind of car is it? Ford Escort. Ford Escort, as fast as it can, I mean, that's pretty powerful. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably like a little bug or something, I don't know. But, you know, good for him, you know, I mean, let him get all the hype he wants. I mean, I'm do what I do and I'm gonna keep winning. Yeah. Uh, this question. Miocic put his money where his mouth was. He successfully avoided Nganu's punching power and took him down in each of the five rounds to earn a comfortable decision victory. Nganu knew he needed to do better. You know, I think I underestimated a little bit. And it surprised me, he went very smart and uh, you know, he did it. He did it well. You're very Unfortunately, things turned from bad to worse for Nganu a few months later, when he lost to Derek Lewis in one of the most boring fights in UFC history. But then, Nganu 2.0 entered the heavyweight fold. Backed by extreme couture, Nganu introduced a far more patient, resilient, and technically sound version of himself to the world. In November 2018, Nganu faced Curtis Blades in a rematch for the ages. Blades started the fight with a failed takedown attempt, and a few seconds later, he found himself in deep trouble when Nganu clipped him with a big right hand. Smelling blood, Nganu swarmed Blades and finished the fight in only 34 seconds. A few months later, Nganu welcomed former two-time heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez to the octagon. Unfortunately, the fight ended after Velasquez injured his knee only 25 seconds in giving Nganu a win by TKO. It wasn't an ideal victory for the Predator, but a win is a win, especially if it earns you a fight against another former champion, Junior Dos Santos. The bout began with both fighters sizing each other up and exchanging some strikes. However, it didn't take long for Nganu to showcase his incredible power. He connected with a powerful right hand that landed squarely on Dos Santos' temple sending him stumbling backward. Nganu immediately capitalized on Dos Santos' compromised position. Following his instincts, the Predator continued to press the attack, throwing heavy punches that Dos Santos couldn't effectively defend against. The Cameroonian's relentless assault forced the referee to step in and stop the fight, declaring Nganu the winner by TKO. Following a win like that, Nganu demanded a title shot, but he still had one hurdle to overcome in Jarzinho Rosenstrike. He did so in only 20 seconds. Nganu certainly deserved a title shot after a win like that, but unfortunately, champions Stipe Miocic and Daniel Cormier had that trilogy thing going on, so the Cameroonian had to wait. See how he goes and see what they say. Um... It's very confusing because um, right now, yes, we know that uh, Stipe is going to fight DC, but w the question is when. This is May, uh, beginning of May, and we don't know when. Nganu finally got his chance to rematch Miocic in the summer of 2021, where he was better prepared compared to the first time around. Nganu stuffed Miocic's takedowns and pummeled him in the first round. He also almost finished the fight on a couple of occasions. In the second round, Nganu eventually finished the job with a straight right hand that left Miocic folded like a lawn chair. It was a perfect performance on the biggest night of Nganu's career as he captured the UFC gold. Dana White would have been over the moon, right? Wrong. By then, Nganu had openly challenged the UFC's pay structure, with only one fight left on his contract he wanted a bigger piece of the pie. Not the way, the way no, you're no, treated. No, no, it's not simply money. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, money is a part of it, but it's 
also the term of the contra that uh, I don't agree with it, you know, I don't feel like uh, it's fair, I don't feel like I'm friend, uh, I'm a free. For his bout against Miocic, the Predator banked approximately $800,000. However, when Logan Paul raked in a massive $20 million for his exhibition match against Floyd Mayweather shortly after Ngannou's win over Stipe, it raised questions. Ngannou was the first one to wonder why there was such a discrepancy in pay. From then on, negotiations between Ngannou and the UFC faced numerous hurdles with his former manager, Markel Martin, playing a significant role. The two parties eventually struck a deal for Ngannou's first title defense against Cyril Ghosn at UFC 270 in January 2022. Ghosn was expected to be Ngannou's toughest test to date, and he did prove many right when he outstruck the champion in the first two rounds. However, from the third round onwards, Ngannou resorted to wrestling. He took Ghosn down for three rounds straight, and won the fight by a decision. What a rally from Ngannou after a tough start. He goes... That was the final fight on Ngannou's UFC contract, although a champion's clause still made him eligible to fight three more times, particularly against John Jones. The fight between John Jones and Francis Ngannou was supposed to be a marquee bout in UFC history and the promotion even offered $8 million for the Cameroonian to stay. And Francis, we, we offered Francis a deal that would have made him the highest paid heavyweight in the history of the company, more than Lesnar, more than anybody, um, and he turned the deal down. But Ngannou wouldn't oblige and eventually parted ways with the UFC in January 2023. But me the most. Fighters no, but, no, no, but you have to understand, uh, Dana have has the power over a lot of fighters, you know. A, lo a lot of them, they are just there to please the boss, you know. A lot of them, they don't have their own personality, they don't have their own uh, identity. So they just want to fit in something, and you can blame them. Ngannou fumbled the bag, according to many, and during the first few months, he did have trouble finding his next home. Then came the PFL with a contract that gave Ngannou the freedom to box, something the UFC wasn't willing to allow him. Ngannou's fortunes turned from good to great when a boxing match with WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury was announced mid-2023. On me, he's definitely got good aim and he's been training, so you know, it's uh, I don't think he can, I don't think anyone can land it on me, that's a fact. And if they do, I'll just get back up because I get knocked down, but I get up again, you're never gonna keep me down, and that's what it is. So, yeah, sure that however he goes, the victory will be mine in Riyadh on October 28th, the victory will be mine, and whether it's knockout or decision, that doesn't matter. The fight took place in October 2023 in what was a star-studded event. Like so many times in the past, Ngannou wasn't given much of a chance, but he rose like a phoenix from the ashes and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best boxers in the world. Not only that, Ngannou even dropped Fury in the third round. The Cameroonian continued to tag Fury on the counters but unfortunately lost by a razor-close split decision with one judge getting it disgustingly wrong. I don't know what those guys saw, but he won the fight. He won the fight. He just beat the best boxer in the whole, the whole world, you know, the story of the box. He just beat the guy. That's the truth. Everyone who watched that fight saw this. It's impossible to see another thing. <laughs> Despite a defeat, a close defeat against Tyson Fury has opened avenues for Ngannou in boxing, with names like Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua interested in fighting him. The big question is, will he conquer the world of boxing as well? You wouldn't want to bet against him. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications for more content. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.